this. Oh, that's the working page, D3D CNC torch table. What we have done so far is in the upper, let me share my screen as well so you can take a look at what I'm looking at. And just to explain where we're at. So in the upper picture, what we see is the universal axis or nice system. What we're showing is the normal 3D printer style small axis and then a much bigger one the one inch rod version which we also which we already got to move and we we made it work once again using the simple marlin and arduino the ramps board the same controller as on the 3d printer the one thing we want to do from here so we for one we have modified the car the white piece that's the carriage piece we've modified that a little bit to make it less bulky to make it faster to print what we started with initially was 3D printed bushings and then we went directly to to bushings that are brass uh, oil filled brass bushings that that are inside this white piece and they work quite well I mean it's decent so we were able to get this thing this thing here is about one one and a half meters long uh, the the big axis, the one inch axis. It it was driven once again by the very small NEMA 17 motor, and it worked great. Uh, we got into trouble when we extended this from five feet to 12 feet, so about four meters. We extended it, and then the rods were so heavy that they would sag in the middle a little bit. So this works for the shorter axis of the torch table, like 1.5 meters, which would be the short axis but the long axis we need to go with something lighter weight and the changes from here that so th this is a picture of the bushings that we used initially and we made it work uh, we moved this around with these bushings a little bit but they definitely have more friction than uh, than the, br <coughs> the brass metal bushings but once again it's the same kind of a design you, you sandwich the rods between the 3d printed plastic pieces now if you do go to the the larger CNC torch table you want to put metal plates on the top and bottom of the printed pieces for more strength I mean if we're talking about this much larger axis you want to reinforce it especially when you're connecting let's call the short axis um, the Y axis and the long axis in between that the X axis the long one is gonna be let's say the long one is the X axis because uh, we're looking, say we're looking for uh, at the torch table from the front. The front is defined as uh, the long side because that's how we lo load metal on it. So we're looking at the table from the front. So, but this is uh, the general idea. There's the axis and the. Uh, I mean, this is the milling configuration, but that's a little different. So, here's um, how we are thinking about doing it right now. That's that's just a general picture of. The early version of this here uh, the idea is the long axis is single and the short axis I'm sorry that no. uh, I can't see anything actually oh you can't see anything right now let's let's see if we can download the actual file so maybe that's easier to see <clears throat> let's see um, if you can't see anything okay well I'm recording this so maybe maybe uh, you can take a look at it but basically the the when you're looking forward at the torch table you're looking at the long axis is going to the left and right and then the short oh. axis is on the far right side far left side let me see uh, there's another picture here so so the, I'm moving on to the next page that's linked from that page which is the CNC torch table version 17.08 so I just pasted the link in there and take a look at that there we do have the the part library of what we did since the initial build so Emmanuel and he was here he he drew up the better version of the axis which has um, the carriage piece where you've got the motor piece the idler piece and the carriage piece the carriage piece is not full plastic it's actually two sh short pieces of plastic bound by two pieces of metal and then the short pieces of plastic have the belt catcher and they have the bushing holders that's the complex geometries whereas the metal provides the real structure 
to this and uh, it's better yeah it's really? it's easier yeah. it's stronger and it's i mean the, the bad thing about the plastic is that it just takes so long to print so unless we have the much larger print nozzle like say 1.4 millimeter i mean this this just takes too long so it's um so we did this and this works well it's you know saves resources and then we have to consider how in this one here uh, i'm not sure full considerations are made for how you attach the second axis to that because um so so if this is the carriage say of the of the y axis you need to attach the other axis to the carriage I don't think this has the the proper bolt holes for that because typically what we did in our normal design is that the, there's nut catchers in the both the motor piece um, so if you take a look at the motor piece here you see that there's three nut catchers and those three nut catchers there there's bolts that go in there that connect this at a right angle to a carriage of another axis if you can follow that and if you can't really follow you can yeah. take a review of this this video um, so where we're at is we've never pr properly connected so so this part here has to be modified okay like right yeah whereas this this metal plate here I'm not I'm not sure I see those middle bolt holes that are needed uh, whereas the next piece here so there's the CNC torch one inch carriage metal plate um, that appears to be proper in a sense but it's not complete though uh, let's see where's that picture here so just to explain what's going on here so here if you have this carriage plate these are the three bolts for the nut catchers now if we're gonna do this properly we need to, for the long axis we have two axes next to one another for added strength so that you get a nice symmetric design so in this case this universal axis system should have two x axes so so without without me talking so much further we got the technical design of some of these parts in concept so let's go to Let's see, and we also drew up the, this is the actual geometry of a torch that we are using. It's actually one, it's actually dimensionally correct. It doesn't have a lot of detail, but it's dimensionally correct for the length and width of it. And we also did a torch holder, which was, I'm not seeing this in the library here, but it would definitely be, let's just point to that so that would be a manual log. Um, he would have that that would be around when was that August Aug about August 20 rod holder Let's see it's around August middle of August yeah there is a torch holder August 16 entry on a manual log file CNC torch 17.08 holder I'll open it up but basically this is a clam it's a sandwich that will hold the torch and once again um, the torch is hot so it would have to have a little insulator piece so you know that heat travels up the torch so you would have to have a little insulator piece such as fiberglass or something right around the torch so this plastic piece is holding it but it's held far at the top so that the heat heat problem is the least in our case we uh, in order from for the torch table not to melt the plastic altogether um, I guess for heavy if you use it 24 7 it would everything would get pretty hot but we're using a w water table we want to the version we want to do yep actually um, that's uh, one solution the water table yeah, yeah. It's better because my friends actually, which have uh, uh, this type of torch table, uh, are suffering from uh, electrical short, always overloaded 
where it came very hot, so it was overloaded and uh, it shut off. Why is it? Uh, why does I it do that know. when it's hot? Yeah, because it's not so, so the water one. It's, it's uh, okay. Yeah. It's so dry off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, we're talking. If you're talking about industrial use, when this, where this thing on is for multiple hour or like even twenty four seven production time, yeah. Of course, things are gonna get hot. That I mean, if we had that without a water table, yeah, it would just uh, everything would melt after you know like yeah. ten hours of using it or something. And depending uh, on what. That's why, uh, that's why I prefer to be. Uh, I prefer to be. Uh, Steel one, not a yeah, one. yeah. You definitely you'd want to be steel, and maybe that's what we end up doing. However, the the way we do, and and there's different ways to do it because one thing possibly to be done so you prevent the the thermal creep on all the parts. I mean, one thing we consider is you can actually suspend these ax axes off the ceiling. I mean, that's that's one way to go. If, yeah, let's let's not get there yet. That's the first thing is to make this thing work perfectly, and then then we can see whether the the plastic is acceptable at all. Because if it's not, we go to the next step, and that is that we're using more more metal, simply, and then we have to test how we how we might redesign it for all metal parts and so forth. But as a first try, I think that's that's decent. But it it is an issue, absolutely. And I think we're going to solve it for, for solve it with the water table. The thing is, uh, we'll have to we'll have to see exactly what the limits are. And <clears throat> if we find that the limits, I mean, our our goal is meeting or exceeding industry standards. So I would say, literally, like it should not overheat if you run it 24/7. So um, that would be, of course, the design goal if, if you talk about meeting or exceeding industry standards. So. This picture that I'm showing here on my screen is uh, the actual torch holder. It's just another simple thing. It's um, so instead of, for example, in, like in this picture of the of the torch table, you have the router head. Well, in this case, you have the torch instead using a similar mounting system, which is sandwiched between two axes in between them. Therefore, the these double this double rod set. Can you see my screen now, or you still can't see it? Okay, um, the double the set of the the double axis set is spaced exactly at a position which holds where where the torch holder is right in between them. So there's definite geometry considerations there. And as I mentioned, the the idler piece on the axis that holds the double axis, well, that that idler piece has either to be got to be double or elongated so it can hold two of the axes not just one if we keep it modular then it would be nice to actually use just simply two of those pieces so you don't have to worry about the spacing and it's probably a good idea I would suggest that for this idler piece on the axis that holds the double axis we have two idler pieces so that the spacing between the axes can be adjusted precisely so that we don't have any issues fitting in the tool head because the spacing for the tool head has to will have to be very specific uh, so leaving a degree of freedom to adjust for that would be good by doing that on the the axis that holds the double axis. So uh, moving on, let's just go into a, a current working document just to draw up how this, what exactly are the design points, and let's see if we could maybe get you going on any of that. Um, so going back to, let's see, let's go to a working doc. Uh, version 3 working dock. There is already a torch table v17.08 version 3 working dock. So let's go into that and continue in there just to uh, continue on the uh, geometry and what what's to be done next. Now another detail. So and this is this is where it gets hairy and and because we want to use so just the rationale just to clarify uh, why we want to use the the rods and that's once again with the intent that we're building a building upon the universal access system so the design is simple and manageable and understandable and more parts are interchangeable 
between the small system with the 8 millimeter rods, the larger system now here with the 25 millimeter, the, the one inch rods, and even larger. So, uh, so belts work. The modifications that are needed to go to the one inch, we we also like to use. And we were just simply using the plain six millimeter belt, a tiny little belt. But it was fine to move the axes actually. And then, but then at, at a certain point, it started skipping. But that's because we didn't have the. Uh, I mean, we we had just a lot of loose ends, like not things not being tight or not fitting properly because we were just doing it for the first time. Uh, but what I would suggest for for the next modification would be one on the axis is use a double belt because uh, uh, the six millimeter I mean that's really tiny for 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 drive uh, I think the working like the acceptable limit <clears throat> there the amount of force we have on the motors is I think about 20 25 pounds or so of force that we can pull with using the little belt but doubling the belt up so basically using a double 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 pulley uh, would be a good idea okay so let's go um, yeah so let's go more into these documents any questions right now or uh, actually I have one question before I see one version with the with the, a gear movement uh, with the what gear gear movement that's correct yeah yeah, I wanna. Yeah, uh, what happened in this version? Yeah, well, I mean that was a totally different design, and now we're we're degenerating it into the same design. I mean it. I mean, uh, what happened there? It was a bolt together structure, not easy to build because you've got the square tubing and all this bolting together. As far as the one that that was the version one, just to go through the history, version two was using just a standard gear rack system but once again uh, moving towards the universal axis as the preferred route for the reasons of product ecology meaning the, just the lower part count so we're not adding much of new design in other words using the same motion system instead of having to work out all the details on another just just for the product ecology side that's that's the main reason and uh, the idea being that if it if this works which it's wor we can make it work and we've seen i mean the i don't think there's any issues on a motion side if you're not talking about contact motion the belts and the simple structure are perfectly fine and uh, one of one side of that is is just to show the limits of what's possible with that is that acceptable i mean right now we don't see any reasons why it's not so given that it's actually much simpler in design, it's actually much simpler to build than the previous ones. The previous ones are just custom custom steel pieces and all that, just just all steel. I mean, not not bad, but our goal is minimum part count for the overall set and the ability to bootstrap it like like if you could 3D print the parts, it it makes it actually much lower cost. So okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, definite lower cost and much higher simplicity. This is, uh, yeah. this is too simple than before, of course. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, whereas the other routes, it's not an entry level thing, really. Um, w this is this part of this is that it's pretty much entry level. Like millions of people, well, not maybe not millions, but hundreds of thousands of people at least have built. Uh, probably the number of people around the world that have built a 3D printer. I know the Prusa i3s, the most common one. There, there are about a hundred thousand that have been sold, and I don't know how many have been built. Yeah. But we know that many, many people can work with this kind of system there, which is similar to what we're doing here. Uh, so, hopefully, much, much more accessible. Now, there's only one detail that I mentioned is was if you do a very large machine like the one-inch rod version that's four meters yeah, long too heavy yeah. too heavy so because the rods are just so heavy and so what we did was we used three quarter inch pipe which is 1.05 outer diameter now how are you going to do the bushings there then because that size of bushing is not standard and you can't get it off the shelf so you can either 3d print which gets you friction more friction and we could probably make it work with 3d prints especially yeah. they have the 
they have the this igly doer bearings this this bearing material that's 3d printable that's really good for um really good for abrasion proof low friction sur surfaces but here what what we did and this is somewhat of a hack is we took the metal bushing we put in a vise and just crushed it and it breaks well actually we broke we cut it in half and then we crushed it in a vise into quarters so it actually breaks very easily and it, it can get nice quarter sections very easily and that quarter section you can put inside that that idler hole but the rest of the idler hole has to be filled so we have to modify that piece so that's the thing that we have to do right now to one of the carriages that's pretty much as far as we got we got to those pieces where we were using the quarter in quarter piece uh, sections and the results were very positive but we never got the actual CAD of that what we did was we actually 3d printed three-quarter inserts to fill in the rest of that that hole space which it was kind of wonky you know it wasn't it wasn't done properly so we never finished that off but that's this is where we are we have to finish those little details such that using very common three-quarter inch metal pipe and I don't know what you have uh, can you tell me in in Saudi Arabia do you have standard NPT uh, metal pipe uh, yes, there is the two standards. There is the millimeter standard and the American standard. Yeah. I have the post in Saudi Arabia, actually. Okay. Well, so using that very common piece, it's quite lightweight, and, and over four meters, it's still very stiff. So we used it, and it was very positive. And, um, but what we did, we just took a, a grinder with, a, with like a buffing wheel, and we smoothed it out, so it was really nice and smooth. And that worked. I think that was an excellent solution. It takes a little bit of time just to buff it, you know, just to uh, get it nice and smooth. But I think that's just a perfect solution because the three-quarter inch pipe is just about exactly the one inch, slightly bigger. But that's where the the broken, the quarter piece of a bushing fits perfectly, glides perfectly on top of that. So that's what we did. We just used a quarter section on top of the the pipes, the four pipes, like you see here in the, di in the conceptual drawing. And then the carriage, the the tool head carriage hangs on that. The the yeah. quarter piece is on the top of the pipes. That makes sense, right? Uh, but um, actually, you bought the two mo two motors in each side, right? Yeah, we are doing two that. Units, yeah, we uh, are. Yeah. Uh, and you can actually, do a single so one. I'm, I'm afraid from that actually. Uh, if it will be one motor and the one shaft. Uh, moving the two pieces could be better because uh, the, the motion will be uh, exactly at the same. Well, they are exactly the same because you were dividing the signal from the two motors. Okay, so what you're saying is and that's a that's a that's an interesting so design point. Synchronization, actually. Say it again. Uh, I'm talking about the synchronization between the movement of the two motors and the same time. Uh, right, but the two motors, what we're doing is we're splitting the signal out of the controller into the two motors. So to within 0 0.01 of an inch, the, the motion is, I uh, sorry, 0 0.01 millimeter. That's the step size. Uh, it's identical because we're splitting the signal from the controller into the two motors. No, there wasn't, no, we didn't see any issues with that. That's That works perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah. I mean the other the other technical detail why doing the single axis is not desirable is because of symmetry. <clears throat> Note that unlike in this picture here where you can have the the little router underneath the torch head is just too long to suspend it underneath. You have to suspend it from one or the other side. Now that's not really stable if that torch handle is about you know, it's it's about 18 inches or 12, 12 or more inches hanging down. So you'd have to really do a better job on the connection to the to the long axis. In other words, the two-sided support is just very much stable, and a, and a torch is in between that, between the two, between the two sections. And that sounds like well, of course you you know you might want to do the simpler attachment just on one side. But because that is so long, I mean, it's just less stability. It's not, 
as good, especially if you have any play uh, within uh, within the axes and the bearings. So, not really recommended. You, you do want to go for symmetry whenever whenever possible. There is a there is a this cantilevered action. Unless you make that really stiff precision steel, I mean, that's going to wobble on you. Uh, and we've seen that, like with a, both with a circuit mill. I mean, there's a little bit of wobble, like even even with a little circuit mill that we did, and we we suspended it in between the two axes, and it was very stable. Whereas you could see that if you're holding it off one axis, it's just not cutting it, not not doing well enough. So um, the other part. So you mentioned about the single motor. The other part that we want to consider and it's just like an experimental point is where the smaller motor is sufficient and is it a problem to double them up well if we are using all these small stepper motors and say we have them in the set already it's actually convenient to use them and of course it's twice the work to attach them and wire them up but it does work and it it's about the same price actually as as doing any other way I mean it is it's not bad I mean we did it it's not it's not much harder than using one motor all you gotta do is run a set, second wire to it to the other one and the idea is that you, know, you just plug in the wires it's, it's pretty it's pretty quick rel relatively quick so not a problem that we've seen but uh, actually on slide 4 uh, here's what you basically see a uh, slide 4 is the overview uh, if you go to the, are you, can you get into the, let me, let me show you where I am. I'm going to just paste that link directly into the chat box. Um, so Roberto, do you have any questions on any of this or? No, no, I'm working on the, on the bucket. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So on slide number four, um, that's what I was talking about where you have on the left hand side there that so that's looking overhead with the long axis being the double axis and the end carriage pieces are actually two individual ones so that we can adjust that space in between to be exactly for the torch mount and that's that so that's a diagram working diagram right there but right now uh, the next steps are to uh, draw this up fully in CAD so one thing is to take the existing uh, idler pieces and modify the inside of it so it holds a quarter bearing on top and, and you, know, you know what I'm saying so let's see do we draw that up anywhere no we didn't draw it up but just to draw it up real quick um, so if we look at the side so let me okay where's my line here so it's gonna be filled in a little bit I'm drawing it all crazy here but here at the top it's gonna have the full uh, let me let me draw a bigger so for the hole I'm gonna draw a bigger detail of one of the holes and that's both of the holes would be like this so basically that I'm drawing the the whole detail So the hole would be filled in. So it's cut out. So you've got basically this. This is filled in. So it looks kind of like that. The, what I showed there is the um, the top is where the the bushing goes in the top the quarter bushing goes here quarter one inch bushing goes here and otherwise the diameter of this has to fit a 1.5 inch 1.05 three quarter inch standard NPT pipe. So this diameter here, the in, this diameter 
between where it's filled in diameter allows for so probably make it like I would say just make it 1.1 inch diameter fits a three-quarter inch NPT pipe just standard pipe um, with which has 1.05 if you look at the pipe tables it was 1.5 outer diameter so that's that's the solution there and therefore the bushing will be I'm gonna draw the bushing in there as accurately as I can so the quarter bushing would be like you got yeah so that's that's our that's our bushing there uh, but note that this this here has to be a uh, above that so that the pipe does not rub against the plastic so uh, it's all crazy but yeah but okay, this detail uh, yeah you see what I'm saying this detail there that detail that corner there corner has to be such that the rod the the, the three-quarter pipe does not touch the plastic so that so that bushing has to be overhang over the plastic. Uh, I don't know how to do it. How to do that in FreeCAD? No, I don't know. Not so, so about FreeCAD. I, I can't. I can't imagine that. Um, I don't know why. Uh, but here, here's the deal. Pushing? Okay, say what? Uh, there is a mechanical stuff. Because this one is becoming easier. Uh, it is somehow uh, so that's what uh, we need pushing with the grooves uh, it's a standard one bushing with the grooves with, yeah with the internal groove in the pushing so it will be easy to lubricate it and and uh, minimize the touching uh, surface uh, I don't know why oh what are you suggesting to so use a different bushing uh, yes let me let me first uh, give a photo for that before. Uh, right. Before doing, uh, yeah. Are you doing that right now, or are you? Uh, one moment, yeah. Okay. So this is basically what we got to do. Now, of course, you can take a one-inch bushing and drill it out slightly to 1.05, but I don't know what bit size you could. You'd have to machine it. And that's just too much for, I don't know, this is doable without any machining. You'd have to machine out a bushing otherwise, but do they have this in sizes that uh, would actually yeah, fit? I think, uh, it's already in Alex it's available here. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of time. Uh, do can we get one like this that's got a little bit yeah i mean and, that, and that's the question like will we have one that fits exactly because this is exactly what we tried to do with the existing bearing but it would not work it does not split it's not flexible um, because it's so thick um so it didn't work for us we tried this but if they have one that's that we can find that's the right inner diameter but that's a you know i don't know how easy that's going to be if it's easy to find it then yes but what we were doing is, and it, and if if that's the case, then they probably are expensive. But those bushings that we have, they're only like three dollars each, or like a couple of dollars each, for the brass oh. bushings. And uh, if you use a quarter, that means you're paying fifty cents for one of them. So, <laughs> so it's really really cheap. Uh, if you can make the price and availability work out, but maybe, I mean, if you can see an easy answer, but I mean, I don't see this as particularly easy unless we can cast these or make these ourselves, which we will later. Um, 
but it's worth looking into but but we don't have to if we make the quarter bushing work uh the i the here from what you've shown you definitely have to have a thicker thicker wall um and then the question is can you find something with a thicker wall that's 1.05 because if it has a thicker wall it will not be as flexible like i could see this one stretching around and actually fitting properly but um it's it's a detail it's an important detail um okay so for now maybe just go with uh with this very easy solution which we know we can do like right now so uh try it and here the the quarter bushing quarter section of one bushing fits in the plastic and prevents the the three quarter inch pipe so mod so this modified carriage for three quarter inch NPT pipe metal for three quarter inch steel pipe CCAD for carriage so quarter section of one inch bushing fits in a plastic and prevents the three-quarter pipe from touching the rest of the plastic so this is the the bearing surface the smooth bearing surface so this is I mean so low cost and and effective it's that's why it's attractive because then this torch table could be very 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 low cost because the all the cost is going to be in the precision parts and that's the precision right there uh, in addition to the very tight precision we have from the the stepper motors so it's it's pretty pretty decent i don't know if you can beat this um i mean it's the this is enabled simply by 3d printing if we didn't have the ability to 3d print this would be literally impossible because then you have to machine out these quarter sections and stuff like that out of whatever you're doing but 3d printing just makes it ridiculously easy to execute this that's why it's worth doing and at a very very low cost so so that's the 3d printed plastic here so this is the metal plate on top of that so metal plate sandwich so one one piece of plate on each side and that way it's it's very strong and that we should actually make it quarter inch quarter inch steel not thinner um, we one of the things we did wrong here was we used one eighth inch that just does not hold all the weight so that, that wants to be a quarter quarter inch steel that's perfectly fine uh, but all these details matter this is what we learned so far so quarter inch steel and then let's do uh, one more detail I want to use two belts which are six millimeters so you you can scale this to more power like the single belt was fine for the it was it can possibly work but let's do double to just to overdo it so double let's google double um, rep rep so that's the double pulley it still fits on a single motor shaft but it allows us to do double the belt strength an idea is actually if you look at the price of the belts oh yeah there's a reason for doing the the two belts as single ones because when you go to a nine millimeter belt or a 12 millimeter the price is much more it's like twice as much as if you use two quarter inch belts so it's also lower cost to do it this way and it works that means the but we can still use a single peg so this is that hole the bottom hole we can call that the the belt catcher do you understand what i mean by belt catcher yeah yeah so that would be the belt i'll not, I'll not draw the teeth uh okay okay i'll just for catching yeah belt catcher hole can hold two belts that's fine you can just put two belts in there double pulley 
and we use two belts. The braking strength per inch of the belts is 800 pounds, 400 kilos. If we have a half an inch, the braking strength is 400 pounds. I mean, that's plenty of strength. So those belts are plenty strong, and you, but you want to run them probably like 10% of their braking strength. So if the if half an inch is 400 pounds, 10% of braking strength is about 40 pounds. So that's the safe area of operation, and that's it's just perfect. I mean, the the numbers work out for the belt being acceptable. This standard GT2 belt. Uh, GT2, GT2, GT2 six millimeter wide belts, quarter inch belts, quarter inch wide essentially. So the quarter inch steel has the proper hole pattern, has hole pattern for attaching the motor, motor and idler. for attaching to the motor idler motor and idler nut catchers. Do you understand the nut catcher idea where you have those three nuts on the side? Sorry. Uh, again for that. Uh, I said do you, you know what I'm talking about when I say the nut catcher on the idler and motor sides? Uh, uh, I, I, I understand your, your, what you're saying, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's an easy idea. <laughs> okay, so to explain the nut catcher, I'm hearing uh, hearing something here. So, if you look at detail of how the axes are attached together, so can you see my screen now? How do you attach the plastic to the plastic? There's a bolt that goes into one of the a nut that goes inside one of the plastic pieces and then a bolt. Yes. Yes, that that part. That's what I'm talking about the nut catchers. So the the pieces for the well, one I inch. No, I'm asking about uh, what is the question here. Oh, what's the question? The question yeah. is uh this metal piece has to have those three nut catcher holes so and and then the nut catchers will go through the the nuts will go through the metal so you need a long bolt that goes all the way around the metal so it's the thickness of the of the carriage plus enough to go inside to the nut catcher so that's where the lengths of those nuts and bolts well not the nuts the bolts the bolt length there has to be very specific so that it just catches the so we have to specify the bolt sizes there very explicitly so so let's maybe start a duplicate the slide so the very specific details that we need to draw out so that's that's pretty much the design we have to modify the existing carriage for this and then um, so details list so let's specify all the details we need to include in our updated CAD so first is the metal cover plate cover plate detail uh, CAD CAD of that uh, let me see how how well how complete that looks from the CNC torch table parts library let's see we have that metal plate it might be might be acceptable but I'm, I'm questioning though that it's, it's overall width so I'm gonna go to Yep. I have a question here. Yep. Why do you need the nut or the bolt to be 
be inside the plastic piece. Why it's not be outside as, as a normal one? Okay. Because it's, it's, it will not touch anything while it's moving. If I imagine right. Uh, I'm not understanding that because the so the bolt that goes inside the plastic piece has to catch the nut. There's a nut inside the nut catcher, right? Okay. Why? Why I have to build to build it as a nut catcher? How else okay. do you propose to attach it? You then <coughs> it's, it's, it's just a normal one bolt with nut. Yeah, Without but where are you going to attach catcher. the bolt and nut? Okay, but this is to attach from the side of the of the idler or motor piece. It's attached to the side. It's not flat attached to a surface, it's attached from the end. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Let me measure it later. Yeah, you gotta study, download the Universal Axis CAD. Let's see, what's a good, let's, let's specify it. Let's, let's look at, um, what is one example of a good file you can look at that shows that detail? Um, yeah, that means you're you're not like catching that detail. So, okay. If you go to the Okay, let let's take a look at this one just just to make sure we're on the same page because I don't think we're on the same page right now. So, take a look at this link. Uh I put in a link to the the motor piece. So, the motor piece naturally has a hole for the motor. Okay, yeah, I'm going to actually, I'm going to clarify that. Because we need to, mod actually, what we need to do is modify this for the double belt, you see. So, do you see the three nut, nut catchers? Yeah. The three holes? So, I mean, I don't understand how yeah. you're saying we're going to attach otherwise. How? Oh, okay. Yes, I understand you now. Okay, now, now you get it. Okay, yes. good. That's okay, yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Um... Okay, so so actually in our specific detail list, the metal cover plate, first of all, is the width correct such that when we mount the tool, the tool holder is exactly at the right spacing. In other words, the the metal cover plate CAD for the carriage. And um, let's see, let's duplicate this, this page here. Um, yeah, let's go through just a couple of these details. So, In other words, this metal cover plate, the, the idler piece has to be narrow enough that when you mount two axes, the spacing between the two axes is correct. Okay, so, but before we get into this, we were, we started this whole discussion, and maybe we, we, sh we should take it here and then check in another, next meeting. But the first thing we wanted to do is the modified idler piece that goes inside the, yeah, the thing from the last page, from page five. Cat it up. Um, but some of the details in there include, so there's the quarter bushing piece. It has to have the belt that fits the double pulley. So basically all the features we discussed in there, they're all in there. It's a checklist. Uh, the things that you have to change definitely is the, is the spacing for that double bushing so that your 1.05 diameter three-quarter pipe fits inside. You gotta modify, make sure the, the spacing is enough for the double pulley. So you have to take a look at the double pulley, cut it up, make sure that belt spacing is correct. So we might have to widen the, the belt hull. So we can say here on the next page, so widen the belt hull. Uh, 
put in the the quarter bushing bushing space. Now well, those are the two main main changes there. Quarter bushing space, uh, basically that detail, and then quarter bushing widen the belt hole. Uh, draw the quarter bushing so that you not only have a sp placeholder for it but also the actual quarter bushing cat up the quarter bushing and what else do we need to do I mean widen the widen the belt catcher hole I think that's those four items are what we need to do to modify. I think that's a good start. We should start there. Um, and then naturally cat up the cat up the pipe section. Cat up the three quarter inch pipe. I mean just do like Let's do, like, to make it manageable, perfectly manageable, because cause the one of the troubles with using, like, a b very big structure, like the, the, you know, like the two meter by four meter structure, that's really large. It's hard to work with it in CAD. So for now, just do, like, you know, 75 centimeters sections, which represents the whole big one. So it's all very nice to see and manageable. So let's just do, like, I would say two feet uh, in my language here. So that's, like... 70 centimeters or so. Um, so when you draw in the three-quarter pipe, just do 70 centimeter long, just just so we can see it very nicely. And then once you have this, then uh, note that these pieces are split. They're not. This is not one piece. What we're showing here, it's split. In other words, I should draw in this line here, down the middle. It's two identical halves is what you're drawing up. You know that, right? We're not printing this as a naturally. It's a it's a clam sandwich. Right? That makes sense to you? Yeah, of course. Yes. Right. Of course, of course. Um, but I need to draw that in there so it's it's very clear. So then once you have that, then the step after that would be to um, after you've got the carriage drawn up like that, do the metal cover plate, which will be, we'll have to, um, the exact width depends, so the idea there is the exact width of metal plate depends on torch mount detail. We already have the torch and torch holder so you can figure that exactly. This is one of those details that have to be there otherwise we're gonna build it and then it's not gonna fit it's gonna be ghetto. <laughs> um, we So we have the torch and the torch holder cad. Uh, let's see, the torch holder. That was once again on, on manual log on August 16. So let's just, just for reference, make sure you have a link to that. So that's the torch holder. Which should be added to this, to the torch table CAD library. Okay, so that's that's where we're at. So if you can do one, I mean, start with one. As soon as you got one, we move on to number two. So detail list, details to do list. So we're at step number one, A through E. Can you do that? Yes, I thought I found it. Yeah. Okay. Especially the exact dimensions. Yep. So you're, 
yeah, as soon as you got it, let's talk about it, let's do it. And then, that's why I wanted to ask if you can prototype, but I mean, um, carriage piece. Carriage is the main thing to which the thing is attached. It's the modified carriage piece. So it was the wrong, wrong name. I put a link to that. Um, yeah, so do 1A, you know, start, you know, widen the belt hole, but you got to figure out what the, you'd need the double pulley. I think you got to start actually to know what exact the widths are. You got to get a cat of that, just draw it up. I think you can do that just off the dimensions. You know that the belt width there on the pulley is six millimeters for the tooth section and you can, you can pretty much draw that up. Um, or see if you can tr find those dimensions somewhere, but off the s uh, double pulley link is on the last page. Let me put that in there again. I think you can approximate, pretty much approximate, approximate simple file for that. You don't have to draw in the pulley detail, the teeth detail. I mean, that's all right. But you can also use the the single pulley that we do have, and you can make a detailed file of that. But the, you don't need to worry about the detailed file as long as all the dimensions are correct. You'll be okay. Um, yeah. So one A and B. Go, start going through it. Yeah. So that sounds good.